Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're hitting the pause button on the whirlwind of new research and fancy technology in the medical speech language pathology world. Why? Because sometimes the most effective solutions are the simplest ones. You know, the ones we might overlook in our quest for the cutting edge. So let's take a deep breath and rediscover the power of fundamentals. Hi, I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist since 2008. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders, and I'm the founder and CEO of the MetaSLP Collective and MetaSLP Education. Author of the best selling books, so You're Having Trouble Swallowing, and host of the Swallow Your Pride podcast, which has over 5 million downloads. Welcome, I am so glad you are here. Number one, mastering the fundamentals, building a solid foundation. Imagine trying to build a skyscraper on a shaky foundation. Disaster waiting to happen, right? Well, the same principle applies to our work as medical SLPs. Adding an extra floor or a shiny exterior is always nice, but it's not the structure. So what is the foundation of speech pathology? Anatomy, physiology, neuroanatomy, these aren't just boring textbook subjects. They're the bedrock of our practice. We need to be masters of the intricate symphony of muscles and nerves that orchestrate the swallowing mechanism. Think of it like this. Every swallow involves a complex sequence of events, a carefully choreographed dance of tongue movements, laryngeal elevation, pharyngeal constriction, and esophageal peristalsis. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We need to understand the nuances of breathing, airway protection, and the intricate interplay of sensory and motor systems as well. If we don't understand the dance, we won't be able to detect those subtle missteps that often lead to a correct diagnosis and treatment plan. And this doesn't have to be impossibly difficult. Spending 15 minutes a day brushing up on basic anatomy and physiology might be enough, especially if you do it in the context of your current caseload. This way your studying is relatable, interesting, and even enjoyable because you know your hard work will benefit your patients. It's a difference between a chef studying math ratios and formulas involved in baking versus actually getting in there and baking the cake. I wanna talk about a previous patient for a second, a vibrant 70 year old who had a stroke that left him with significant weakness on his right side and difficulty speaking, but his challenges didn't end there. He also had a history of heart disease, diabetes, and COPD. When the SLP first evaluated him, he was struggling to swallow thin liquids. He coughed frequently during meals and his breathing was becoming labored. An instrumental swallowing evaluation revealed aspiration and his medical team was concerned about the risk of pneumonia. Now here's where the fundamentals come into play. Knowing the specific muscles and nerves affected by this gentleman's stroke allow the SLP to develop targeted exercises to strengthen his swallow. Understanding his COPD meant the team could incorporate breathing techniques and oxygen therapy to improve his respiratory support during meals. And being aware of his other medical conditions helped the team anticipate potential complications and adjust his treatment plan accordingly. The SLP focused on strengthening exercises, postural adjustments, and compensatory strategies. Slowly but surely, the patient's swallowing improved. He regained his ability to swallow thin liquids, his coughing subsided, and his breathing became more stable over time. But most importantly, his quality of life improved dramatically. He was able to enjoy full meals with his family again, and his spirit soared. This case highlights the power of mastering the fundamentals. It's not just about memorizing facts. It's about applying that knowledge to real life situations, to understand the why behind the what, and tailor our interventions to each patient's unique needs. Number two, beyond the diagnosis, seeing the whole patient. Diagnosing dysphagia is like discovering a single piece of a complex puzzle. It's a crucial step, but it's not the full picture. We need to go beyond the label and understand how that diagnosis impacts our patient's life, their ability to nourish themselves, their social interactions, and their emotional well being. Let's face it, a diagnosis can be really scary. It can evoke feelings of fear, anxiety, and uncertainty. Our role as medical SLPs is not just to identify the problem, but to provide support, education, and hope. I know giving hope doesn't sound very medical, but it can make a huge difference for the patients who need it most. Sometimes a little encouragement can make a huge difference in helping a patient reach their goals. Ultimately, we need to be compassionate listeners, skilled communicators, and advocates for our patients. I once worked with an older woman with dementia. She was admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. 
She had a history of gradual decline in her cognitive abilities, and her family noticed she was having increasing difficulty with meals. A bedside swallow evaluation revealed signs of dysphagia and an instrumental assessment confirmed aspiration. Now this case presented unique challenges. Her dementia meant she had limited insight into her swallowing difficulties and might not be able to follow complex instructions or consistently use compensatory strategies. Her family was understandably worried about her safety and well-being. In this situation, it was crucial to go beyond the diagnosis and consider the patient's overall needs. The SLP worked closely with her family to understand her preferences, her routines, and her cognitive abilities. The SLP explored different options for modifying her diet, providing feeding assistance, and maintaining her oral hygiene. Oral health in particular is a really important variable in the development of aspiration pneumonia. The SLP also focused on educating the family about dementia and dysphagia, explaining the risks and benefits of different approaches and empowering them to make informed decisions. It wasn't about imposing a rigid treatment plan. It was about collaborating with the family to find solutions that respected the patient's dignity and enhanced her quality of life. This case underscores the importance of seeing the whole patient, not just the diagnosis. It's about understanding their individual circumstances, their support systems, and their goals. It's about providing compassionate care that addresses not only their physical needs, but also their emotional and social well-being. Love what you're seeing so far? Well, then you won't wanna miss what's coming up next. If you're already finding this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe so you can stay tuned for more. And don't forget to ring that notification bell. Consider it your VIP pass to all the latest insights. And don't keep your questions bottled up. Hit me with your best shot in the comments below. Whether it's about specific interventions, assessment tools, or anything else, I'm here to answer your questions and spark some awesome discussion. And hey, since you're clearly a superstar SLP who loves learning, I've got a little something for you at the end. Stick around to snag it. It's going to totally up your meta SLP game. Number three, advocating for simple solutions. The power of the basics. In a world of ever-evolving technology and groundbreaking research, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of the latest and greatest. But let's not forget the power of simple, time-tested solutions. Consistent practices, instrumental swallow studies, and good old-fashioned oral care can make a world of difference in our patients' lives. A friend of mine had an opportunity to work with a small community hospital that was struggling with a high rate of aspiration pneumonia among its elderly patients. Many of these patients had multiple medical conditions and cognitive impairments, making them particularly vulnerable to swallowing difficulties and pulmonary complications. The hospital staff was dedicated and compassionate, but they lacked a standardized approach to oral care. Some team members were diligent about brushing patients' teeth, while others relied on mouth swabs if they had the time to do it at all. There was no consistent protocol for assessing oral health or identifying patients at risk. Recognizing the importance of oral care in preventing aspiration pneumonia, my friend worked with the hospital to develop a comprehensive oral care program. She implemented a standardized assessment tool, provided training to all staff members, and established clear protocols for brushing and suctioning. She also emphasized the importance of educating patients and families about oral hygiene. She and her team even encouraged family members to participate in oral care routines and provided them with the necessary supplies. It was all hands on deck. Within a few months, the hospital saw a significant increase in the frequency and quality of oral care being provided. Patients' mouths were healthier, their overall well-being improved, and the staff felt empowered to provide consistent, high-quality care. This story demonstrates the power of simple solutions. Oral care might not be the most glamorous aspect of medical speech pathology, but it's a fundamental part of preventing complications and improving our patients' quality of life. With simple practices like this, we can make a real difference in the lives of the patients we serve. So let's not get lost in the sea of complexity. By mastering the fundamentals, understanding our patients' unique needs, and advocating for simple, effective solutions, we can make a real difference in their lives. Let's remember that sometimes the most basic approaches have the greatest impact. Feeling overwhelmed by the complexities of Medical SLP? You're not alone. The Medical SLP Collective is a welcoming space for SLPs of all levels to connect, learn, and grow. We offer a wealth of resources, a supportive community, and expert guidance to help you thrive in your practice. In the link below, you'll find a free, done-for-you oral care in-service implementation to get you started. Enjoy!